Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, my name is Jennifer, and I am going to be presenting the webinar to you, New Things to See in MVE. During this webinar, we'll be going over a few of the areas that we've enhanced in this upcoming build, which include setup, the exam module, patient profile, calendar, the quick order screen, and last but not least, the CDC. The first area that we're going to cover um, are some of the new setup options that we've added. You can find those under File, Setup, Company. This is a good area to check whenever we release a build um, or a revision of a build. We've been adding options as far as how you would like your system to perform. Um, so you can always check in here in this area right here called Other Settings. Um, if you are looking for a way to default something or to change the way this system works. For this build, we've added a few things in here. Um, in the daily closing, we've added the option for the EFT payment to be considered in a daily closing or not. So you'll just select no or yes from the drop down. It will default to no, which means that any electronic fund transfer payments that you take will not show up on your daily closing. However, if you would like them to, you can select yes here in the setup and they'll be included in that daily closing for you. Next, we've added some new exam settings. Um, underneath the general sub tab in the setting tree, you have the option now to default the complaint tab in the exam, either to the HPI builder or the questionnaire. You can also allow or not allow more than one exam window to be opened at once. We'll go over some of these settings when we get to the exam portion and how they will make the system react. This one exam window setting was added to increase performance. It is going to default to yes, which works differently than you guys experience it working now. When we get to the exam portion, I'll go over that in a little more detail and hopefully be able to kind of guide you in the best direction for however you want this to be set up. The summary tab can be defaulted to either the summary view or the details view. This is actually not new for this build, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, a lot of people still don't know that it exists. And then last but not least, we've given you guys the option to automatically transfer your final prescriptions upon saving the exam. When the build is released, this option will be set to no because that is currently how it works right now. You have to click on the transfer RX to patient button for that to happen, but you can come in here and then change it to yes. So when you automatically, or when you save your exams, it automatically transfers any final prescriptions and only final prescriptions. We have also added some functionality to the who is your insurance setup. Previously, you had to set up the username and password for every employee that you wanted to give access to order through Lens on Demand, or I'm sorry, uh, access to who's your insurance. Now you can set it up at the location level one time. If you're not in the setup stage right now, or if you're already using Who's Your Insurance, you can simply leave it the way you have it set up. But if you're new to MVE, or you will be new to Who Is Your Insurance, you can come here to set it up at the location instead of every employee. And then the last area of setup that we've enhanced, you'll actually find in the Diagnosis section, which is File, Setup, Diagnosis. We've made it a little bit easier to create a favorites list. 
Previously, you had to click on the diagnosis to highlight it, and then mark the favorite down here, uh, which meant that you had to click on each diagnosis in order to make it a favorite. We've opened up this favorites column here for you to be able to simply check off all of the diagnosis that you want to make favorites. You can give those a sort order so that they appear in your full list in that sort order and in your favorites list in that sort order. Okay, so our next area will be some new exam features that we've added. And we're going to go ahead and open up a live exam and show you some of these things. Pardon me for just one second, guys. Let's open the exam that we created earlier for Mr. Oliver Wright. And um, actually, you know what, let me go back to the search screen. So I'm going to close this. And you'll notice now that the fields for the search exam have been rearranged just slightly. We moved the patient number after the last name and first name. And the cursor now starts in the last name field instead of having to click in it and then start your search. Once in the exam, you'll notice if you have um, photos of your patients, you can see them up here in the top left corner of the exam. And we actually added a feature that if you hover over it, it will enlarge the photo so it's easier to view. In the complaint tab, we have the option, as we just went over and set up, to either default this to the HPI builder or the questionnaire. When you update to the new build, it will be defaulted to the HPI builder. That's how it works now. If you would prefer to default to the questionnaire, you'll just go ahead and make that uh, selection in the settings options. In the Health tab under Medications, we have now given you the ability to discontinue an outside medication. If your patient comes back in and says that they are no longer taking that medicine, you can actually discontinue it by selecting the date. In the Allergies tab, we have given you the ability to free type an allergy reaction. So when you add an allergy, and you get your list of reactions here, if there is a reaction that you would like to indicate that's not in your list, you can actually free type in the reaction field here. 
and it will save in your allergy list at the top of the screen. We made a change in the entrance tab of the exam so that now you can copy forward from a previous exam. Over here in the top right corner, you've got the copy from history button. When you click that, it's going to open up all of the exams and the entrance tab for that exam. So right now, this exam from January 14th is highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. And that will copy over all of the information that was filled out on that exam's entrance tab to this exam's entrance tab. It does bring over all of the fields that have information in them, with the exception of the IOP. You can still see IOP history down here. And then you'll go ahead and add your new IOP for this exam. All of the fields that were copied are able to be edited. So if everything is the same from the last time, with the exception of a particular field, you can go ahead and edit that field on the new exam. In the refractive tab, we have a few changes here as well. When we go ahead and add a final prescription, or any prescription for that matter, the tab order of the refraction will now go sphere, cylinder, axis, and then to the add button. Also, if we leave a note on this prescription, you'll actually see a little indicator here that indicates there is an internal note for this Rx. You still have to click on the Rx to view the note, but at least, at least this way you know that the note has been added and you don't have to open up every single final prescription to see if there were any notes. On the assessment tab, we have actually added the function that when a Medicare type insurance, let me see if I can find one here, They don't have one apparently, but when one is added to the exam, the PQRS button will bold to indicate to you that you have to meet those PQRS requirements for this Medicare patient. Also, you see in the drop down here that some of the insurance companies were red in this patient's drop down. This indicates that at one time the patient had this insurance, but it is now inactive on their profile. I'm going to go ahead and remove the physician from this exam because we have added um, some new features concerning the locking of an exam. You'll notice down here at the bottom that the delete button has been removed. An exam can only be deleted now from the patient's profile under the history exam tab. We also don't have the radio buttons for opened and locked. Now they are just in the form of a status. And there are some hard-coded statuses that perform specific logics when you select them. Currently, on hold is a new status that we've added with the logic that when you select on hold, it will lock the exam for anyone that is not the examining physician. So this is a way to lock your exam so nobody else can get into it and make any changes to it, but also indicate to you that you maybe still need to go in and add some information or review the exam. So when you put it on hold, it locks it for everyone else, but you're still able to edit it as the examining physician. 
and it does not create the exam all letter because clearly you're not done with it yet. It is on hold. The open status is what will default for all new exams, and it has the same logic as it did previously. And then when you want to lock an exam, you can go ahead and pick the status locked. We did add a trigger that you're seeing here. If no physician is on the exam, it will not let you lock it. So I'm going to go back and add my physician, and then we'll be able to go to the assessment tab and lock the exam. Okay, and then we spoke about the one exam open at a time setting that we added to the other settings tree. Um, and basically what that's designed for is to increase performance. So many times physicians have multiple exams open at once. Some of you may realize that they're open and you like it to be that way, and some of you don't even know that they're open behind one another. And what having uh, multiple open exams does is it slows down each exam when you're going from tab to tab inside the exam you're working on. If there are several other exams open at that same time, um, it slows everything down. And it also increases possible data loss. If you haven't closed those exams, which saves them, then uh, if you get disconnected or something happens, all of that information could be lost. So we've added that setting, which we are going to default to yes, which means that only one exam will be able to be opened at a single time. You really won't notice too much of a workflow difference in that. Um, for instance, I've got this exam open here, and when I go to um, search for another exam, it actually is just going to save and close the exam that I have behind the search field here and open the new one instead, rather than opening it on top of one another. This really can only uh, add benefits to you. However, if you have developed a workflow where you like to keep several exams open, you're more than welcome to still do that by selecting no in the other settings tree for that option. The next area we're going to touch on are some new patient profile enhancements, just a few things. We'll actually go over via screenshots. Um, in the profile of a patient for the outstanding balance, down here in the bottom left corner, you'll see the actual patient balance is highlighted in red instead of the total balance. We took your advice and heard your feedback that the total balance indicator was nowhere near as important as the patient balance indicator. And we switched the red color we had in the total balance now to appear if the patient has an outstanding balance. And then also we changed the recall and last exam visit functionality. Um, let me rephrase that actually. The recall functionality hasn't changed. Everything will still work the way it does. However, that field that's here in the middle of the patient profile that used to be referred to as last exam date is now called recall from. And you can get the last exam date or the last visit date right down here under the note session notes section. Um, the reason for this and the workflow um, that advocates for this change was maybe you have a patient that comes in um, three months after their annual exam for a medical check, a red eye visit, a consultation about LASIK, um, and you go ahead and you perform an exam for them. 
And when you save that exam, it's going to update this last visit area so that at any given time you can pull up a patient's profile and see the last time they were in your office for exam services. However, you still want to be able to recall them for their annual exam based on the date they had their last annual exam. So even though they've come in for a visit and we've updated being able to see that on the profile, we haven't changed any of their recall information. This recall will still be set for 12 months, 18 months, however your annual exams are set for, to be recalled from that appointment that they had three months prior to their medical visit. Let me take this quick opportunity to just let you guys know um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to chat them in. And once we go through all of the enhancements, I'm going to open up the chat and I will answer any questions that come in for you. So if this um, topic kind of leaves you wondering about some things, go ahead and chat in those questions anytime and we'll get to them shortly. We did make some updates to the calendar as well. Um, we added a lot of improvements that I really can't show you right now. They're kind of on the back end, but things that will greatly improve the calendar performance. And then a few things that make calendar life a little easier. Um, we added the ability to search by day of the week in the search availability screen. So now not only can you indicate what doctor the patient wants to come in for, to come in to see, or if they want morning, afternoon, or evening appointments, but you can pick a date range and then indicate, I want to know the availability for every Tuesday during this date range. And if you're using the wait list feature, we also added the ability to remove somebody from the wait list in the form of a deny button. So when you add somebody to the wait list, which is a manual process by your office, you can then later select that patient to go ahead and book them for an open time slot on the calendar, or you can deny them, which will remove them from the wait list and not book them an appointment. Um, actually, before we get to the CDC enhancements, let's look at some of the order enhancements that we did. So I'm going to go ahead and search for an order for Mr. Oliver Wright. and show you that in the frame section now, when you have a frame that is set to a source of order here, it adds this extra ellipse button, which is where you would typically set up this frame to create a purchase order. You'll still do those same steps, but now we have added the option to create the purchase order directly from this area of the screen. You'll go ahead and select your date, your supplier for this frame, add any reference or notes, and then you can go ahead and create your purchase order from here. Prior to this build, what you have now, what you experience now, is having to set up these options and then go into the More button to create the purchase order. And now you can do it right from that frame area all at the same time. The more button for a spectacle lens or a frame only order will not contain the PO button anymore, but it will be here when you do a contact lens order if you have the workflow of creating contact lens purchase orders individually from each order instead of using the auto generate feature. We've rearranged the More button real estate a little bit. 
and we move down here to a section titled Other, the second pair indicator, your statement information, the Vision Web order status, and a to-do button. If any of you are familiar with the to-do button in the exam, this to-do button works the same way. When you click on this, it will actually open the employee message system with this patient and the order number you want when you clicked attached to this message that you want to send to an employee or to yourself with a list of items to do for this order or this patient. And last but not least, we do have some distribution center changes. If you are using the CDC, we've now added an icon for the warehouse in the toolbar. This icon will show up when your employee login has access to the warehouse and you are logging into the warehouse module. Otherwise, for anybody who doesn't have access to the warehouse location um, or when you are logging into an alternate location, no screen space is going to be taken up by the warehouse icon. Everything will look the same as it does for you now. When you click on that warehouse icon for the warehouse users, it will take you to the warehouse module which is the same now as when you navigate to File, Inventory, Central Distribution Center, Warehouse. So all that now can be done by clicking on that icon. We also added an enhancement where Show Warehouse Location is selected in your company setup. Employees do not need to have access to the warehouse in order to see warehouse inventory information like on hand counts. So currently the way that this works uh, before we release the new build is you have to indicate here that you want an employee to see warehouse inventory information such as on hand counts and you also have to make them available to log in to the warehouse as an employee who works at the warehouse. Well we've taken away that need so you're Location employees don't need to be able to log into the warehouse to now see the warehouse inventory information. We also added um, to the frame inventory module, and this is good for people who are not using the warehouse as well as people who are. Um, We've added the ability to indicate the cost of a frame, the group cost of a frame, and the source of a frame per location. In the build you are currently working on, the retail price was able to be set for each location, but you could only set cost, group cost, and source for the item as a whole. So this will help for locations who are, uh, for practices that have multi-locations and are spread out over a wide territory or are in different markets, even in the same area. Um, you can set up a different retail price. If different locations pay a different cost than other locations, you can set that up. And uh, you guys, um, if you're not aware, the cost is actually what you're paying for the frame as a practice. And the group cost is basically what the manufacturer sells this across the board for, which in some cases may be the same and in some cases may be different. And then you also have the option to set an individual source for this frame per location. So if you have some locations that sell the frames off of their board, you can indicate inventory for those locations and other locations that need to order the frame from the warehouse or from the manufacturer, you can set those up with their own order source to populate into the order.
And last but not least for the warehouse, if you are familiar with the warehouse, you know about the items tab, which is basically a dashboard for all of your items that pass through the warehouse. Um, well, this tab can now be sorted by item status by clicking on the column header labeled item status. It'll put them in alphabetical order and you can go from A to Z or Z to A, which is an easy way to group items by a particular status so that you can kind of view where you're at with everything. Our last enhancement is for cloud customers. Um, if you are using MBE Cloud, we have now launched a status site. You can get to via this web address here, status.mbecloud.com. And you'd be able to see the status of the current cloud activity. So is it down? Is it up? If we're having maintenance windows, how long will they last? If the cloud is down or we've had a disconnect, you'd be able to see it here and see how long we think it will be out for, what the remediation plan is. And you can also subscribe to this site to be updated automatically when something changes, such as an outage, either via email or text message. I think that this can be very valuable for cloud users and subscribing can kind of give you a heads up. Um, when, you, when we experience an outage, you will know right away. It can update you via email or text message so that you can make the necessary changes in the workflow um, for the time that we're going to be down. You can also see any past incidents, how long they lasted, when's the last time we had an outage. And in some cases, the cloud service is not actually what goes down, but you may be experiencing a local outage such as Comcast is having difficulties. It's hard to tell when you're working in MVE what the problem is. So if you are experiencing something, you can always come here and see if our cloud is operational and then it might be a regional um, server issue that you're experiencing instead. That is it for our tour of the new features that will be available in MVE in the next build, uh, which is scheduled to be released very soon. Um, I would say within the next week. And as usual, it will be released with a full version of release notes that contain all of the items that we fixed or enhanced in the build. If you're looking for a particular item that you didn't see here, I would suggest reading the release notes to find that. And of course, if you have any questions, you can reach support at myvisionexpress.com or contact them via our phone number and extension three. Okay, I am going to open the session up for any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead and chat them into me and I'll answer them. Okay, I did get one question in to show how to delete an exam from the patient's history. So let's navigate back to MBE. And we'll open up Oliver Wright's patient history or patient profile.
from the patient profile history exam tab, we'll be able to select the exam and then hit the delete button as long as you have security access to it. And the only reason you won't be able to delete an exam is if it's been locked. It will give you a prompt that the exam has been locked and cannot be deleted, at which point the examining physician will be able to unlock it, leave it at a, at a status of open, and then you'll be able to delete it from there. So if we go to the history tab and then the exam sub tab, we can pick here an open exam and delete. We removed the delete button from inside the exam uh, because it was just too easy to click on that when you were really trying to sign the exam or update the, the locked or open status. And really, an exam doesn't need to be deleted from within the exam you're working on, but instead can be done here. All right, another question came in. Um, earlier, I said that if a patient has a Medicare type exam, I'm sorry, Medicare type insurance on their profile that the PQRS button would bold. Um, so Medicare type insurances don't have to be named Medicare. You actually indicate that an insurance is a type Medicare at the insurance setup, which I'll go ahead and show you now. If you navigate to file, Setup, Insurance, Insurance Companies. For any of the insurances that you've added to your setup, you are able to indicate it go. Um, what type of insurance this is? Here we go. Insurance type. So I can select Medicare for any of the insurances I set up where appropriate. And if this insurance is on the patient's profile and pulled into the order, the PQRS button will bold for you. All right, one more question's come in. Um, if I can go over the other settings tree again, which I'd be happy to do. So if we go to File, Setup, Company. And then to the Systems tab, we'll be able to see the other settings tree. Again, this is a really good place to look um, to find new, new things that we're adding to the software. Um, we have decided to give you guys some options instead of just making the software operate in a particular way. And we add those options generally here in the other settings. The newest ones available for this upcoming build are in the daily closing where we've added the option to uh, either include or not include your EFT payments to your daily closing. The logic behind this was that the daily closing is basically to reconcile your cash drawer. This is how much money in cash I've taken in. This is how many checks, patient checks, insurance checks, and credit cards. And EFT, because it is actually already deposited into your bank account in 
for some users doesn't belong in that daily closing drawer reconciliation. Rather than just remove it from there, um, we decided to give you the option. If you were using it in some other way, you can continue to do that the same as you have been. And if you don't want it included in your daily closing, then you can select no here. And then the other options were all located in the exam under general, where you have the option to set the complaint tab default, which was either going to be the HPI builder or the questionnaire. You have the option to only allow one exam window open at a time. This is going to default to yes, which is a different workflow than you're experiencing now. Normally, we default it to work the same way it does before we release the build. But because there are such um, changes in the way, in terms of performance, we decided to go ahead and implement this for you and allow you to change it back if the workflow you had is what you want to keep and performance is not an issue for you. And then again, the summary tab default can either be the summary view or the details view. And the details view is basically the exam all letter. And the summary view is a summary of each compartment in that tab. And then finally, the transfer final Rx on save. So if your office uh, is one where generally um, the Rx doesn't get transferred either at all or in time for the optical staff to help the patient pick out their materials, it might be a good idea to go ahead and select yes in this dropdown so that when the doctor saves the exam, any prescription that is labeled final will transfer to the patient's Vision Rx tab in their profile automatically. The exam does not need to be locked for this to happen. Whether the status is on hold, locked, or open, if this setting is set to yes as soon as the exam is saved, which happens automatically when you close an exam, then the final prescription will be transferred. Does anybody else have any other questions? If you are asking me your questions, I cannot hear anybody um, who's logged into the webinar, so go ahead and chat them into me. At the bottom of the GoToWebinar panel that you see, there is a area where you can chat either to everybody or directly to me. We'll go ahead and give it a couple more minutes for any questions to come in. Um, and if not, if you guys are good, we'll go ahead and end the webinar. Uh, this is something that we'll be doing before every new build release. Um, and if we have any big changes in the middle of builds that come in the form of a, re of a revision, we'll go ahead and hold a webinar for those as well. It is important that you still read the release notes um, for any of the bug fixes or issues that we have addressed, but we know that your time is valuable and um, it's good for you and for us for you to know the things that we've changed and the areas that we've enhanced. So we'll be doing these webinars more often. All right, it doesn't appear that anybody else has any more questions. So this webinar is being recorded. As soon as it's published, we can go ahead and make that available on our support site.
If you have any questions that you didn't get a chance to chat in, you can send those questions to training at myvisionexpress.com or you can request a copy of the video there and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys for attending. Have a great day.